Hello again and welcome to the SUTV show. Shortly we'll be previewing Sheffield United's trip to Everton. But first of all, let's hear what Jaden Bogle had to say after last weekend's game against Nottingham Forest. Jaden, how do you start by summing up that game? Because for much of it, you must have felt like us that, that you were on top in it. Yeah, a lot of frustration. Um, all the boys in there are frustrated, disappointed. Um, and sort of sums up our season a bit. Um, dominated large parts of the game, had fantastic opportunities in the first half as well. I mean, just didn't put the game to bed. And when you don't put the game to bed at this level, teams have got quality to come back. So, I, I know it's all about results, but you look for improvements and positives. And for 60 odd minutes, I, I'm sat up there in the press box today thinking Sheffield United aren't just the, on top here, they're the better team. And yet the scoreline obviously didn't reflect that. Yeah, as I said, it sort of reflects our season really and how it's gone. Um, just there's been multiple games where we've we've competed well and we just haven't had that final bit to, to put games to bed and it gives teams opportunities to get back into it and once again it's happened happened again today and yeah everyone's frustrated and they're disappointed and, and we need to, to improve on that. And as always delighted to welcome the former blade striker Carla Saba. Carl, you've just heard what Jaden Bogle had to say. You were there, of course, after the game. Um, what did you make of what he had to say? Yeah, it was, a, it was a frank and honest interview. Always always very tough to talk after a defeat, so it was nice of him to, to come out and speak to us. But he, he said exactly what we all saw, that the team dominated. You know, in the Premiership, to have that many shots and that many chances and, and not to score as many goals is it's galling because you you know you're in the top di division in the world and to get that many chances shows your team is playing well and to have another defeat it, it's galling and I, I just think it as he said it's it's what's happened for the majority of the season so it's a real shame you mentioned the the uh, the shots the efforts on goal, uh, possession, all the stats pointed in favour of Sheffield United, especially that first half. Yeah, and it's, it's been really difficult because those, who, those people who don't go to the games, when you're, you're, you're speaking to people and you're trying to convey, like away at Newcastle, how well we played the first half and yet you know, we, we've been thumped again. Again, the, the, the Forest match, which are local rivals and... and you, you want the, to get the result. To, to be so dominant and to have so many really good chances, it, it's hard to explain. And, you know, a lot of the fans are, uh, have been criticising, saying you're speaking with rose-tinted glasses. You're not. We, we, we really have been that dominant. But then yet again, we, we, when you're not taking your chances, it, it gets compounded by just being so, so leaky. 100 goals now. We've now conceded 100 goals, and you can't sugarcoat that, can you? You know, defensively, we've been so, so poor. Yeah, you mentioned the goals conceded, which is an obvious problem, but looking at Sheffield United from an attacking point of view, especially over the last few weeks, there's been a noticeable development there, hasn't there? Oh, Apart from, yeah. obviously, finishing the chances. Uh, the, you know, the pattern of play and the structure, it's been wonderful. And as I say, the technical ability and the understanding of the boys to open up these teams. You know, you're playing away at Liverpool, you're creating good chances. You play away at Man U, you're creating good chances. You play away at Newcastle, you create... So technically, and, and they, they're really gifted going forward. Obviously, you need to be more clinical. But, you know, the strikers will eventually be in place to, to put the chances away. But to create them, we're really, really looking good. And that, that's what's so depressing in that you're, you're not out of your depth. It's not like the, the boys are going on the whistles being blown and they're completely inferior. It's not like that. It's just we haven't taken our chances and we've, we've been very, very weak defensively. And you're right to mention the, the quality of the opposition because, you know, creating chances against sides around you in the league, it's probably possibly expected, but United have gone to Anfield and Old Trafford and whilst you give away a lot in possession, they've created a lot of chances yeah. in those games against and those it, quality teams. And it's not, you know, my Sheffield United team where we'd huff and puff them and we physically break teams down. This team, this team is a team of quality. The boys are, they're not you know, just all flying in for tackles. They're opening them up with technical ability and, and good play. So that, that's what I found hard to deal with, that these boys are playing so well and they are good players. It's just, this is why the manager and the coaching staff have got a really big job on their hands in, in the summer, because they've got to identify what is the missing ingredient. 
And having kind of a bit more consistency in terms of selections in midfield, how much do you think has that helped in terms of our attacking fluidity? Yeah, of course. Um, to have a, a settled free where they get in to build a relationship and understanding, of course it helps and we've seen that. And, you know, that's been another of our problems and the manager said that is actually having a consistent team on the pitch. We, we've had a, throughout the season so many key players not involved, it's been hard to put out your best team and, and to, for players to develop understandings. And we saw a couple of players coming back against Nottingham Forest. First of all, Jack Robinson. I mean, we were speaking a few weeks ago, we thought maybe his season might be done, but great to have him back. A real leader out there. And Chris says he needs more of those. Yeah, of course, you, you, we really do. We need a, a spine. You have a spine of leaders who not necessarily have to have the armband, but their performances and what they actually give off the, you know, the aura they give off on the pitch Im improves players around them. And he has been massive this season. You know, the, probably the defender who got the, the least amount of praise going into the season has come out with, you know, so much credit. His performances, the way he conducts himself, he is, you know, he's the blueprint of what we need for our spine. And Ream Brewster, back in the match day, match day squad, he was on the bench. I and mean, we've had him on here before, haven't we? We talked about, you know, every time he's kind of got a bit of momentum going, another injury seems to have set him back. So a chance maybe in the closing weeks for him to uh, stake a claim for next you, season. You know, he's, he's one of my favourites. I'm, I'm always excited to see him when he's on the pitch because I think he's explosive. He's got real quality. And like everyone, we just hope he gets a run. If he can, if he can score a couple of goals or whatever in the last couple of games, have some positive performances so he can build in the close season because I, I feel next season, him being fit and in, in the team is going to be massive to our promotion charge. And we spoke about building and you know getting off to good starts and United have done that recently, getting the first goal in the last three games. The key now is obviously you know getting the second, keeping a clean sheet. Easier said than done, of course, but that will be the aim in the last few weeks of the well, season. Of course, you can see how they've gone about their business the, the last couple of months. They're trying to attack, they're trying to score, they're trying to stay in games. What, what's concerned the manager and what's concerned us all is the way when you score one, you, you're not able to shut up. But the, the, the shop, you're, you're basically capitulating it. And it's the second, the third, and the manager's going to identify what the cause is. Um, I know he's spoken a lot about fitness and believing that, you know, after 60, 65 minutes, we start to fatigue. And the other teams, you know, with the bigger squads, are able to introduce fresher players and our boys just fall away. So I'm expecting our players are going to have the pre-season of their life ahead of them. But, you know, this is in weeks, weeks to come. We've got to get through the, the next two games yet. And finally, a quick word, former striker yourself on Ben Burton Diaz. Six in 12 now is league record. He continues to go from strength to strength. It is... The goals have been really wonderful, good goals, it, but for me his work rate, his team ethic, the, the endurance, the way he runs hard, he works the channels, he, he's been outstanding since he's come, come on loan. Um, unfortunately, he could, have, he could have had 10 goals, he could have had you know, way into double figures from this loan, but it's not gone, but I think nobody can, can fault his, his application, his desire, and he's, he's been wonderful to watch. And now I'm delighted to say we're joined by Ben Barrett and Diaz. Carl and myself were just talking about you a few moments ago, Ben. Um, six in 12 now, Premier League appearances. You must be really pleased with that. No, definitely. You know, I've, I've, I've loved every minute here since coming in at Christmas. And, um, and yeah, I'm just happy to, to be helping a team out and, and, and scoring goals. And, uh, but, yeah, I'm thankful for the opportunity that the, the gaff has given me, obviously, coming here. Um, to the Premier League, never played in the Premier League before, so it's it's amazing. So uh, no, I've really enjoyed myself, and, uh, and yeah. Talking about the penalty against Forest, it never looked in doubt. But of course, you were taking it at the Bramall Lane end. All the Forest fans in the lower tier, former Forest player, of course. So imagine they were giving you a bit of stick. So tell us for the thought process when you were stepping up for that. Yeah, definitely, always a bit a little bit nervous. But at the end of the day, I've I've done enough in training to to kind of like to know I'm going to do it the execution right. It's just what a keeper does. Uh, obviously, yeah, my old club, and obviously I've played there a few times. They give me a bit, of, a bit, a bit of grief. So it was nice to score past them and 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 and, and, uh, and celebrate. So it was, uh, it was, it was, it was happy to get a goal against my old club. Yeah. Obviously, you, you've made the step into the Premiership now. How have you found it? Have you been? You must be really pleased with the way you you are able to actually create chances, even against these top top world class defenders. 
Yeah, definitely. You know, I I come I come here just wanting to to work hard and and and, and play some minutes. I didn't get many minutes in the in the early start of the season at, at Villarreal. Um, but yeah, I've, I think the, the the team attacking, you know, Gus and stuff like that, and got great ability going forward, and the, the, we, we create a lot of chances, play some really good football, and um, but yeah, it's obviously most of the players have, have 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 been doing it for a long time now. Obviously in the Championship and stuff like that, and and some in the Premier League. So we're like I said, it's just we've got to keep going. Now we've got two games left, and hopefully we can give the fans something to cheer about going into the to the new season. How, how have you found playing in front of the Bramall Lane crowd? Because I know personally, I found it a great help. You know, they they get behind you and they they demand a lot. But the way you play, completely, you know, it's what the Blades fans want. No, definitely. I mentioned it a few times. I've played here quite a, quite a few times, really. I don't know, three or four times. Uh, always in the uh, the away dressing room, and you know, when you're in the away dressing room, it's going to be. A, a long day sometimes. Uh, I think one comes to mind in, in the FA Cup. Yeah, what a game! That yeah, was. Un- unbelievable game. The atmosphere and in, in that tunnel when the music's going. So, so yeah, I always knew that the, the fans here were incredible. And uh, since I've been here, they've they've supported me and um, and yeah, supported all the players. You know, and uh, and that's not easy sometimes when the when the, when the teams uh, losing and stuff like that. So credit to them sticking uh, sticking by us till the end. And um, but yeah, good atmosphere and it's it's, it's good. You mentioned actually about what it's like as an opponent to play at Bramall Lane. You've told a good story about when you came as an opponent as well. You said it was quite an intimidating place to come and play. You've both said that quite quite interesting. That really two yeah, different eras. It's, as well. it's, it's yeah, different eras. Um, but yeah, it, I found it. It really I was intimidated by it. But I thought that's why I want to play there. If they can intimidate me, they can really get behind me. And you know, I, I loved every minute. Yeah, no, definitely not. Because I scored a penalty for Blackburn again in the. Again, in that FA Cup game, and uh, yeah, f- felt a lot of pressure, you know. So, so it's, uh, it definitely gets to the stadium, you know. It's uh, amazing fans, and and yeah, they've been for for many many years. What's your preferred position up top? Do you prefer playing as a two, a one, or the three, like the wides on on the left cutting in? Yeah, no. So obviously with Blackburn, the past three four years, I really enjoyed playing on the left. Uh, scored a lot, a lot of goals, and uh, enjoyed playing there. You know, more the ball and stuff like that. But obviously, since I've been here playing with the two up front, I feel like for me that's it's so exciting to play with someone else. You got someone to play off, someone to to, to link with, someone's already there around the corner and stuff like that. So it's nice to play in the two. You've, you've got support there, and uh, but yeah, I, I like playing in the two up front for me. It's it's real it's a real fun position to play. You know, when you've got someone next to you all the time. And uh, but yeah, out of the six goals, and of course, there's still two games to go. Do you have a particular favourite so far? Yeah, definitely. For me, it would be Old Trafford away. As a young boy, uh, always watching uh, United and the, the history of that stadium and stuff like that. For me, is I love I love watching United. So when I was younger, and so uh, for me, definitely a, a dream of mine was to score at Old Trafford. And uh, but yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, it's a good mixture of goals, isn't it? That you've scored. I mean, the penalty against your former club will have meant something. You mentioned the Manchester United uh, goal, but that goal against Palace as well, that team goal was uh, was some move and a great finish as well. Yeah, no, that was crazy. I think the first ten seconds of the game it wasn't even warm yet. You know, uh, down down the line, and and yeah, it went in. So it was. Uh, it was great, you know, to get early, but then you've got you've got 89 minutes then to defend, so it's <laughs> so it was quite tough. But uh, but yeah, an amazing moment again in front of the away fans, and the away fans are as, as good as the home fans as well. I've loved playing away; they get right behind you, so it's uh, it's always fun scoring a goal away from home. And when you look back, maybe in five, ten years' time, at this little spell at, at Sheffield United, I mean, what do you think this has done for your career? Because you weren't playing in Spain, but you've come over. You've got games under your belt, experience of the Premier League. Sheffield United have benefited from it massively as well. It's been a, a really good move for you, hasn't it? Yeah, like I said before, I'd like to thank, like the, obviously, the, the gaffer and the staff for giving the opportunity because obviously I've not played here before. So, it's, so yeah, the opportunity to play here, I'm thankful for that, and uh, to play for the for, for this great club is also. A massive thing, and um, I'm just happy I made a decision to come here because I've, I've loved every minute of it. The lads are incredible. Um, like I said, staff fans. So for me, it's been a, it was a no-brainer in the first place. But for me, it's a, it's a great club, and I've loved every minute of it. And a great achievement, 50% goal uh, ratio when you first come to a new club. I can't think of anyone else who might have got that <laughs> similar start to a Sheffield United career. I think yours we've just checked was five and ten actually. Thank wasn't you, it? thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Very different, very different eras, different levels, and you know what? What a great player he's been. You've been 
a real breath of fresh air and it's been really great watching you. Yeah, I was like to say all, all the, the players as well, you know, when I first came here, helped me settle in massively, you know, knowing a few of them and stuff like that. So it's, it's been great. So I've, that, I've enjoyed it. That must be one of the, the most frustrating bits is that the team are a good team. It's, a, it's not that they're not, when the whistle goes, we're inferior to the opposition. That must be so frustrating for you players because although you're not getting the points, we know for the majority of the games you're playing such great football. Yeah, I definitely. I think a good example of that is Newcastle. You know, first, first half they uh, they didn't have a have anything in the game. You know, we was all over them, um, creating chances. And like you see at Forest the, the, the other day as well. Um, but yeah, we've got to be more clinical. I, I, I put my hands up and said I had a, a chance I could have put away first half at Forest. Cam also he done the same. But but listen, at the end of the day, we've got to be more uh, clinical and stuff like that. But um, but yeah, we we create chances. We can score goals. Since I've been here, I don't think there's been a, a a game where we've not scored no, a goal, right. so it's you know, so we, there's yeah. lots to build yeah, on. There's definitely. positives in such you know tricky times. Definitely. And looking to finish on high, of course, two more games to go, two more great games. Everton away at Goodison Park, probably the final time Sheffield United will go there as a ground, and then Spurs at home at Bramall Lane. No, definitely excited to play uh, at Goodison Park. I never played there before, so that'll be a, a good moment as well. Uh, and obviously, Spurs at home is always going to be a, a nice one to finish it off. And hopefully, we can get a, something to cheer about at, at Bramall Lane in the last uh, game of the season. All the best, Ben. Thanks Thank very, very much. much. Thanks, guys. Well, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by two members of Sheffield United's brand new recruitment team, Mikey Allen and Jamie Hoyland. First of all, Mikey, welcome back. It must be great to be back at Bramall Lane. Yeah, thanks, Matt. It's um, it's great to be here. Obviously, uh, spent a lot of my career here, um, 17 years previously, so it's great to be back, see some old friends and, and some new faces as well. And the new role, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so head of recruitment, um, obviously a great opportunity for me. Uh, previously was head of analysis for a long time, so uh, a lot of the um, skill set that obviously I acquired over the, the years previously, I'll bring into this role, uh, obviously, Watching, um, watching games, analysing and studying players, uh, but now with a lot more detail into the individual that we'll be looking for. So you've had a role which has kind of worked hand in hand with recruitment for a number of years. Jamie's been involved in recruitment for a long time. How much has it changed? And just give us a flavour of you know what, what's, what's involved these days. Yeah, well, I think there's a, there's a lot more data involved in it now and there's a lot more processes that go into finding a player. Obviously, the bread and butter is still getting out to games and watching players, but the process behind that is, is maybe a little bit deeper, certainly on the data side. And looking ahead a little bit to next season, the manager spoke about, we all know it's a big window ahead, isn't it? But I imagine also, you know, great scope to, to build something here and there. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a great opportunity. It's an exciting time. Yeah, obviously we're disappointed that we're going out of the Premier League, but it's a, it's a great opportunity to, to have a really successful season in the Championship. We know there's a lot of work to be, to be done in the summer, but we're, we're really looking forward to that challenge. And Jamie, welcome back. Player. Thanks, Matt. Thank you very much. A player. You've worked in the academy and now the recruitment side. So you've been all over Sheffield United for the last 30 years or so. You, for, you forgot one there, Matt. I was ball boy as well. Of course, yeah. Yes, early doors. And so fan. I, and fan. And fan. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. So, yeah, full circle and back um, doing the recruitment side, which I'm, I'm really looking forward to. And you've been busy, obviously, since you left the last time. A lot of recruitment roles, most high profile, I would say, a, a really long stint at Everton. So plenty of experience behind you now. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I have I started with the FA with England and then uh, Everton for seven years, where obviously I did nick Dominic Calvert-Lewin, which uh, you know some United fans still tell me about. But uh, yeah, br a brilliant to work there, uh, a really good club, but... I'm at a better one now, I'm back home. And coming back home, everyone knows your connections here, going back to your father, of course, as well. Was that the biggest pull for you? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, to be honest, I'd always wanted to be um, higher up in, in my scouting um, profession. I always wanted to be a chief scout. So if it had been Sheffield United, if it had been anywhere else, I would have took that opportunity. As it is, it worked out perfectly. And it's a time of my life with things that have gone on personally with my dad, obviously passing away last October. To come back and work for Sheffield United is just an unbelievable opportunity for me. And to work with Chris Wilder again, obviously, Michael, you've worked with him for a number of years. You play with him, of course, Jamie, as well, so that must be great to be. be yeah, it is. Again. I mean, we, 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 you know, I've known Chris for, for since we were young, young kids, really. Um, we, are, we have been friends, but not 
as like friends where you're ringing each other every week. We, we've, we've come across each other through football when Chris has been at Oxford or wherever he's been, Northampton, and then obviously when he's been at United. Uh, so when I got the phone call off Chris, you know, it's not one we've talked about for years and years and years. It, w it was a great one to come over for a chat and I couldn't wait to get over the Snake Pass. And like we've just been speaking to with Mikey, I'm not saying it's like a blank canvas to work off, but it is a big window, there's quite a few out of contracts, you know, there's going to be scope to bring in a number of faces. I mean, I would imagine that's quite an exciting challenge, isn't it? Yeah, well, I could say if I'd a pound for every Sheffield United fan who's come up to me and said, oh, it's great, welcome back, but oh, you've got a big job on. I don't think I'd have to do the job, but yeah, it is. It's, 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 it is a big job. It's an exciting job uh, to, to take on. I think we've got to get the culture back of the club. That's, that's an important thing. And we're talking about data, going out to matches. Um, I think they're going out to matches and seeing the players and know what they're all about. Are these Sheffield United players? Uh, I know that sounds a bit, well, what do you mean Sheffield United? Can they play at Bramall Lane and do they know what the fans want? And I think that's a big thing. I've played in teams. Mikey's been involved when, when the club's been like that. It's a massive thing and it, and it works so big that the players then go off the crowd here. And I think that's what we've got to try and get back. And we've heard Chris speak in the press about the culture and how important that is. You know, would you go as far as saying that you could be watching someone with a skill set on the pitch, which is you know right up there with what you're looking for? But he he doesn't have that character, that character to play for Sheffield United. Is it a case of that is a non-starter straight away? Uh, no, not a non-starter because obviously, um, you know, you, you, if he comes in and he's got that skill set, he can suddenly develop into a Sheffield United player. Under Harry at that time. We signed players who you thought they're coming from down south or they're coming to Sheffield, but they soon got into the character of Sheffield United. So, yeah, you, you, you're still looking at, we're still looking at very, very good players, but I think it's building that team culture, which is an important thing. And um, we've got Everton this weekend, so I'd imagine you've got a pretty good inside knowledge on a lot of their players. You mentioned Dominic Calvert Lewin, of course, you took him to Everton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of the team, what's playing now, um, our team who, who came in while I was there. Um, I mean, the club, they've, they've done well to get out of it this season. They, they are safe. Sean's done a great job with that. The club's still a bit in a turmoil with, with the takeover. But yeah, I mean, Everton are epitomise what, what Goodison's about. They all work hard, they all know their jobs and it, it's going to be a tough game on Saturday to get anything there because they're on a real big high at the moment. And overall, the, this project that you're both going to be working on going forward, I can tell just by talking to you both, exceptionally excited at the prospect of being back here and working for Chris and Sheffield United once again. Yeah, absolutely. So, like I said before, it's a great opportunity. Uh, really looking forward to the challenge. Uh, me and Jamie go back some time ago when you were here about 10 years ago, was it, Jay? So, uh, yeah, so we, we worked together uh, then for a little while, so we know that together we can, we can be a, a good team for Sheffield United and find some good players. Gents, thanks for joining us and the very best of luck. Thank Cheers. you very thanks much, Matt. Matt. So a couple of games left. What are, what are the priorities? What, are, what, are the, what is the strategy, really, approaching these last two? I think you've got to play for pride. Um, at the end of the day, you're going out onto a football pitch, competing against the opposition. Um, when you step on the pitch, you're not thinking about the league table, what's going on, you're just going out there to try and, try and beat the opposition. So I think everyone has to, to use that pride and, and there's always something to play for. So I think you have to go out there and, and perform. It's Everton next. Um, what have you made of, of their season? It's been, a, it's been a roller coaster for them, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. It has. Um, they've been in and around it, but obviously they're safe now. So um, it's going to be a tough game. They're a fantastic team. We've seen what they've been able to do over the years. So it's going to be a tough game. But as I said, we have to approach it with like we're playing, playing for a lot of pride um, and not go down without a fight. The reverse fixture was another example, I guess, of a game that, you know, the one that get up, got away, really. Yeah, exactly. And as I said before, it's been like that for the majority of the season where results have gone like that. We've started well, had opportunities, haven't took them and then we've been punished. What about your own form? Uh, one or two goals, as usual, you, you chip in with, <laughs> with one or two every season. How, yeah. how do you reflect on your own performance this season? Yeah, I've got a few. I think I started off a bit a bit slow at the beginning of the season, um, then found a bit of decent form. Um, so, yeah, personally, I think, I think I've think i done I've done well. Um, but again, there's always always more you can do, and I feel like there's a lot more I can still achieve. Looking to the future, then, uh, what have you made of the emergence of youngsters like Oli Arblaster? That, that, that bodes well, doesn't it? Yeah, he's done very well since he's came in. He's played with confidence, given us something a bit different. 
he's been brave, he's been positive, and, and that's all you can ask from a youngster coming into the team. He's even captured the side. What kind of personality <laughs> is he? Is he a leader? Yeah, he is. He is. Um, he's got a voice. Obviously, it's difficult for young boys coming into the team, but it's a very welcoming squad, and he's been here for a while, so so he knows all the boys, and, and yeah, he's, he's a good lad. Great to hear there from Jaden Bogle. Um, first of all, Carl, a quick word on Jaden. Uh, he's been in great form for, for most of this season. Yeah, he's been really, really good. He's, he's a really exciting player to watch. But I think since Chris has come in, especially, his defensive work has been brilliant. And you've seen his fitness. You know, he's got stronger. Uh, he's, he's attacking with, with wholeheartedly. He's running back towards his goal. He's everywhere. And, you know, when he gets in the final third, we're, we're all off our seats because he, he's got an eye for a goal or an eye for a pass. Uh, no, he, he's, had, he's had a really good season personally. Yeah, you mentioned his fitness. I mean, he's had his injury problems in the last few years at Sheffield United, but away from injuries, he's over 30 starts now this season. Just goes to show, doesn't it, what can happen? Yeah, and it's nice to have a, a position where the players consistent and he's there and as I say for, for me he's got stronger and stronger obviously as he got more match fit and we're seeing that you know I think we're seeing some of the best football he, he, going forward he, he's wonderful he's asking lots of questions but he's he's rarely beaten you know one-on-one -on -one situations so no I think he's really added a lot to his game this season and he's, he's really dependable and he'll be in contention of course to play against Everton at the weekend um, what can we expect from that game? Yeah, another really tough game, a, a wonderful, wonderful ground, incredible atmosphere and you're going to be facing a, a very strong Everton team. You know, they, they got dragged into the relegation battle, they've had financial issues that haven't helped them but Sean Dyche has, has really galvanised the team and let's face it, they, they've got some top, top players so it's a, it was a real miss position, a false position. Um, and I don't think the boys are going to be under any false impressions that this is going to be a really, really tough game. You mentioned they've got some top, top players, one that we know particularly well, of course, uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, former Sheffield United striker. It looks like he's getting his kind of form back together again now towards the end of the season. Other players had injury problems, but certainly one to look out for. Yeah, he's uh, their top scorer, scorer with seven, and I think he'll, he'll be licking his lips because... He loves to, to score or attack crosses and, you know, we, we've been very, very susceptible to crosses. So, you know, I know Chris and the team will be working their socks off to, to, on the training field to try and tighten things up. Um, but what, what better way to focus than knowing you've got a former Blades player who, who's desperate to score, score against you. So, yeah, really big, big proposition. But again, going forward, I, I believe we can hurt them and we can cause, cause problems. What are your memories of that game at Bramall Lane? Seems a long time ago now, doesn't it? The two old draws, a real thriller, wasn't it? It was, it was a thriller and it was at the start of the season where we're all, you know, excited and there's anticipation and, and we weren't as beaten down as we are now in that how things didn't materialise. Well, again, we created some great chances and right at the end with the, the final one with McBurney, you know, that's just typified the season, what could have been. And... The record that United have had at Goodison Park down the years, pretty good. I mean, I'm thinking back to the Daniel Jebison moment when he scored uh, with no fans, sadly, under the COVID restrictions. And then that game when United won 2-0, I think it was, Lise Mousset scored in, in the Premier League. Yeah, yeah well, history, history bodes well. But um, it's all to do with these boys and how they apply themselves. But for me, it's if, they, if we can take our chances, that's the, that's the key. If we can be clinical because I believe that we're going to be good enough to open them up and, and, and create chances. It's just if we can be clinical and take these chances, goals change games. They change atmospheres and they change everybody's confidence. In the past couple of games, if we would have scored and gone on to get the second goal or, or create a buff, bigger buffer, the, the atmosphere changes on the opposition and our boys grow. And it, it, it's just... Most, most of the games this season have had sliding door moments where if we would have just taken that chance, things would have been much, much more different because we take the pressure off ourselves. It, it's, you know, it's such small margins and we've conceded lots of goals, but they must be thinking that you know, if we take that chance, if we get the second goal, the pressure's then switched and the results would have been different. So, you know... It, it's, for me, so far, it's just been a season of what if and how, how very different it could have been. But these two remaining games are still 
really important, aren't they? Obviously, the players will want to finish on the high. This is probably the last time Sheffield United will go to Goodison Park, a famous old ground. Uh, they're set for a move very soon. And obviously, planting seeds for next season, it's still very important, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's, it's massive. You know, from personal experience, when I was young and in my first season, I got to play in the last game of the season against Bournemouth and I scored two goals. That close season, you can't believe how excited I was. I'm desperate to get back. I'm running every day, trying to come back in my, in my best shape and wanting to get on the pitch. This is it. These boys have got a chance to, you know, set themselves up. I know it, the bigger picture, the team as a whole, as you know, we've gone down and then it's been a bad season, but they, it could spur them on to start in a positive manner next season. And You've got to take anything you can. Our, our fans, our travelling fans, deserve a performance. They stuck by the team, had some incredible, you know, atmospheres that our, our travelling fans have, have, have given, and we need to repay them. Now, before we go, Carl, details will be coming up on our social media accounts about a new, uh, <laughs> new segment, which will be asking you specific questions. So, your opportunity to grill Carl Asaba here with anything Sheffield United related. So, uh, first of all. Looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to it. I know there's going to be a lot of questions asking if I can not turn up to the show. Um, so if we can just let them go and I, I just try my best uh, to improve week on week. But uh, yeah, please ask, ask what you like and we'll, we'll give honest answers where we can. So details on that coming up in the next few days. That's all we've got time for here on the SUTV preview show. We'll be back next week as we look ahead to Sheffield United's final game of the season against Tottenham Hotspur. <laughs>